John Flynn was, was a, a minister in the Presbyterian Church uh, and through his work as he was um, traveling throughout the outback, uh, going out to communities, um, what he saw was the isolation of people. So the impact is not just only from the spiritual side of it, but he also saw what impact that isolation had. And he talked about what was called the awesome silence. And what he saw was the importance of individuals being able to connect, uh, to have a sense of community and develop that, and also saw through that work the importance of health and well-being. He had many obstacles along the way. He had his internal fights with the Presbyterian Church in looking for funding. He was seen to be stubborn and uh, possibly even difficult, but I think it's this inner drive that um, uh, essentially he couldn't take no for an answer. I think he was a visionary, but to me he was a pragmatist. You know, he saw a real problem that had a real solution and someone just had to find it. He was a man with a great vision, but I think he was uh, also an innovator rather than a dreamer. I think his mantle of safety that, that he wrote about captured the hearts and minds of people in the city. That was his vision, um, and medicine was the main part of it, followed on by education. The RFDS was established in May 1928 with the first flight from Cloncurry to Julia Creek. The aircraft was named Victory. The first pilot was Arthur Affleck and the first doctor was Dr Welsh. In that first year of service, uh, 255 patients were attended to uh, and it's interesting when you look back now, um, 83 years later, uh, the RFDS now deals with and treats 277,000, uh, one every two minutes. The uh, initial funding, uh, the final 2,000 pounds that was needed really to get the organisation off the ground was donated by the creator of the Sunshine Harvester, uh, Hugh Victor Mackay. Um, and he was a very astute businessman and, uh, and a member of the Presbyterian Church, had the respect of the church and uh, finally they, they believed that if someone of his business um, esteem believed in the organisation then it was worthwhile. The formation of the company in the early years depended upon a collaboration between um, medical people and pilots and uh, the interesting story is um, Hudson Fish, who uh, was the founder of Qantas, was involved uh, with sourcing aircraft and uh, actually f their company flew the aircraft for a year or so. The early days were all about the, uh, the personality and the perseverance of individuals who brought the organisation together. After the war, there was a lot, certainly a lot of aviation experience um, that had come back, um, and they were looking for something to do. And uh, they were involved in the first year of flying and uh, in the development with de Havilland of the aircraft that would enable them to take a stretcher to bring a patient back if needed. The history of the Outback is all entwined. Um, no part of it has developed in isolation. School of the Air was the most wonderful invention for kids of the bush because it meant that they could stay home and do their schooling and as well as having their mother or governess to do their correspondence papers, they could also have lessons on the air so that they could actually have some human interaction that was outside their household. It was started uh, using the RFDS radio frequencies when clinics went on and uh, it's a wonderful legacy of the RFDS. John Flynn was looking for someone to take over and forever the very strong persuader uh, was able to uh, persuade Fred Mackay to, to join him and to take over and over time uh, I see Fred Mackay's role and legacy to essentially take the visions that John Flynn established and really then turn the organisation into what is the modern day RFDS. That has been the legacy that Fred Mackay has left having the network of service across all of Queensland. The RFDS attracts very passionate people. 
and it does need drive. Uh, you're often working in isolated communities. If you're on an aircraft and, and you're the doctor, um, you have nowhere to turn. So you have to have resilience. There is no way you could uh, deliver the service at three o'clock in the morning on a dirt strip with, with, uh, with headlights on both ends to, to guide the air, aircraft uh, if you didn't have you know, people with significant courage, uh, resilience uh, and drive to want to do this. It has grown uh, from the idea and the vision of one man to be the organisation it is today. Delivering 270,000 patient outcomes in a year uh, from the vision of one man is an extraordinary achievement. The organisation has done this, maintaining the ethos, the values, the ethics of the organisation from when it began. You know, Flynn's slogan, the mantle of safety, really is just the old-fashioned version of equitable access to healthcare. It transcends uh, isolation, education status, race, um, wealth status. It's this very um, egalitarian organisation that, that crosses all the boundaries uh, and welcomes everyone into it and treats everyone the same.